Ritsuko Akagi is NERV's chief scientist and commanded the technical branch of NERV headquarters, which is responsible for the research and development of the Evangelions, as well as their maintenance and repair. She's the daughter of famous scientist Naoko Akagi, who headed the Evangelion project before her at Gehern. In many ways, as you will see, Ritsuko is living in her mother's shadow. Her story begins when Naoko Akagi, Ritsuko's mother, begins working at Gehern shortly after Gendo loses Yui in her contact experiment with Ava Unit 1. She begins work on the Evangelions and the Magi system. Now, what are the Magi? The Magi are a trio of supercomputers used to operate the Evangelions and will eventually run NERV headquarters. Naoko implants three different aspects of her personality within the Magi. Her as a scientist, as a mother, and as a woman. Naoko is friendly but distant with her daughter, and it turns out Ritsuko acts the same way towards other people. Naoko even admits to leaving Ritsuko on her own for too long. She blames Ritsuko's difficulty with men on this, and admits to herself that she acted like a mother only when it was convenient. When Ritsuko starts college, in an effort to distance herself from her mother, Ritsuko bleaches her hair blonde. It becomes very different from her natural hair color, which is very similar to Naoko's. A few years later, after graduating, she joins Gohern to work under her mother. It is then that she discovers that Naoko has been having an affair with Gendo. Naoko was sexually involved with Gendo shortly after the disappearance of Yui, which is exactly what she wanted. As construction of the Magi begins, Gendo brings in Rei, and immediately Naoko notices the similarities between Yui and his new child. A couple years later, on the night of the Magi's completion, Naoko becomes enraged when she hears out of Rei's mouth what Gendo really thinks of her. Seeing Yui's resemblance in Rei sends her over the edge, and she strangles the child to death. Upon seeing what she had done, she falls into the Magi computer several stories below. Gehern now changes into nerve, and now Ritsuko begins to follow in her mother's shadow. She soon begins an affair with Gendo, just as her mother did, evidenced by this conversation with Gendo near the end of the series. <laughs> Ritsuko even ends up acting destructively towards Rei, just as her mother did, for the perhaps the same reason, because they both felt used by Gendo. When Gendo sends Ritsuko in place of Rei to Sele, and she is put nude before them, and was most likely sexually assaulted, I'll get to that later, Ritsuko retaliates by destroying the dummy system, basically an artificial pilot system, and with it the mindless Rei clones, and she insists that what she really killed was Rei, her rival. She finally confronts Gendo and Rei Ayanami in Terminal Dogma, and with attempts to self-destruct Tokyo 3 to stop Gendo from initiating Third Impact. However, the command is overridden by the Magi's personality of Naoko Akagi as a woman, and Ritsuko sees this as Naoko choosing Gendo over her. Gendo speaks in an audible confession to Ritsuko, and she responds, Gendo then shoots Ritsuko in the chest, killing her. What were Gendo's silent words to Ritsuko? There have been many theories or best guesses as to what he actually said. However, here is the only official statement on this, taken by Ritsuko's voice actress. When it came time to do the voiceover, Hideaki Anno showed me a single hidden hint at the last moment. With that one incredible hint, I and Ritsuko Akagi were utterly defeated. It hardly means saying, but director Anno is incredible. Truly awesome. A genius. Sure enough, this hint is in the actual movie. And I'll show you the best guess on the words Gendo said to Ritsuko. It first begins when Rei appears to Maya as Ritsuko. Maya says this line. <laughs> Answer to what? What was she looking for? This line seems like it will be a heads up to the audience that the answer you're looking for is coming up in the scene. And you can also see the focus of the cut is on her keyboard, where the answer will be revealed. Ritsuko then types out the words, I need you. So... Of course, the words couldn't have been, I need you, otherwise he wouldn't have shot her. So, wait a minute, is there any evidence to back this up? Yes, and for this I will bring up a confrontation scene between these two just a few episodes before this movie. Notice the similarities between these scenes. 
The most likely answer is that the end of Ava's scene should be considered a continuation of the scene from episode 24, because in some way, things pick up here from where they left off. Before wrapping this up, I should point out Ritsuko's final words in End of Evangelion. Did Ritsuko have romantic feelings for Gendo? So, いなくなったの、あの子。え、多分ね。猫にだって寿命はあるわよ。もう泣かないでおばあちゃん。うん。時間ができたら一度帰るわ。母さんの母前にももう3年も経ってないし。今度私から電話するから。じゃ、切るわ
The interrogation scene is sort of a good cop, bad cop routine, but the audience only sees the good cop half here. The bad cop part that was before this isn't shown, but is left to be inferred by the audience. Look at Ritzko's body language in the scene. Despite the horrors she has been subjected to, she is standing tall with her head up, glaring in defiance at her tormentors. Obviously the point would seem to be that she is not trying to cover herself, but rather is standing before the old villains with pride and defiance, not wishing to give them the satisfaction of seeing her cringe or cower. One word particularly stands out in the above scene. So what have they been doing to her up to this point? Ritzko's own words spell it out. The conclusion is clear. Ritzko was sexually assaulted. Naturally, this wasn't done by the committee in person. It was probably carried out by the Sele minions who actually have her in their custody to prepare her for her interrogation by the committee. From this, it becomes understandable that she says these words. Ha 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 ha!